In this video, I'm going to go over how you can take this Niagara Fluid effect and emit it from an object like the placeholder geometry I have here. We'll be able to emit Niagara Fluids from our geometry, and then if our geometry moves around, we'll also be able to get those velocities to affect the Niagara Fluids as well. This is something that you could deal with in many different ways, but we're going to go over a simple and straightforward way for doing this to keep things simple and not to overcomplicate it. So first of all, we have our Niagara fluid that we created in some previous videos, our flamethrower effect here. And we're going to change that a little bit. But first, what we're going to do is duplicate the effects system. So I'm going to right click on my effects flamethrower system and just duplicate it and call it something like FXS underscore burning geometry. And now we'll have a new effects system, which will probably uh, be a good thing to do in this case, because we're probably going to have to change a few settings in that effect system to have this actually emit from a geometry. So I'm just going to delete the old effect from my viewport here. And I'm going to open up that new FXS burning geometry. And in our effect system here, what we're going to do is put the resolution a little bit higher. Uh, I have it really low here and have it swapping to high on render. Uh, but for now, just so we can preview it a bit better, I'll go here and, and change it to maybe a value like 100 or 120 or something. So we have a bit higher quality fluids. And now I'll save this effect system. And right now we're emitting from a sphere. You see here, shape, location, sphere. So we don't want to emit from a sphere. Uh, we want to emit from our geometry. And we don't want to add a velocity from a cone shape. We want to add our velocity from the movement of that geometry. So these are two things that I want to remove and replace. So shape location and add velocity, I'm just going to delete. And for particle spawn, where we're spawning the particles, we want to emit it from our geometry. So I'm going to add a new module and I'm going to search for geometry. And it's already going to be this, like I know it's going to be static mesh, and we're going to want to emit from a static mesh location. But before doing that, we need to sample the static mesh. So the nodes we have to add a sample static mesh. And I'll put that here after initialize particle. And then we'll do a static mesh location to emit from the location of that static mesh. And now what we should be able to do, looks like we have a warning here, so we can just click on that. And it says we have no geometry selected. So we'll just put in our placeholder character or whatever geometry you're wanting to emit from. And right away, we should see it emit from that geometry. So if I play my effects now, there it is emitting from the shape of that character. My bounding box is probably a, a little bit messed up or not really shaped correctly. So we should go adjust that. So I'll just pause this, go to the grid 3D gas and change the, the bounding box pivot. So I'm just going to zero it out and uh, see what that does and we can show these grid bounds might make it a bit easier to figure out where they're being placed and just offset them correctly so in my grid 3d gas under grid local pivot looks like i need a pivot up so that's on z i'll do 0.25 maybe 0.3 try to get that character right in the center and I probably need a bigger balance. So instead of 250, I'm going to do something like 800, 800, 800. And that will make the effects quality lower. Maybe it's a little bit too big. Maybe it can do 500. And the effects quality gets lower because since you have a bigger bounding box, um, there's less resolution spread out over that, that same space. So this seems to work. Um, I think this will be okay, bounding box for this. Maybe I can make it a bit thinner on, on the Y axis or something, uh, just to try to get a little bit more detail in there. And that, that should be all right. So now I probably need more particles as well. So I'll go to spawn rate and spend 90. I'm gonna put this up to like 2,500. So I have a lot of particles being emitted and kind of see the shape of the character there. So this is good. If I click play, look at that. Our character is on fire. Um, so that, that works. So now if we save this, there's a problem. If we place this in our viewport, this FXS burning geometry, um, it's just the effects. And we don't want to have to go line it up to our mesh like this. Like that's a kind of a pain. 
So what we're going to do is create a blueprint asset from this effects and attach our mesh to it so that everything's kind of just being able to be moved and placed all together. So to do that, we're going to right click on this FXS burning geometry uh, effects that we made and we're going to go to asset actions, create blueprint using this. And we're just going to specify our location for it. So I'm just going to put it under um, samples effects here and go save. And I have to give it a different name. So I'm going to call it BP for blueprint underscore burning geometry. Save. And now we have our blueprint, which has our effects. So you can see here Niagara in the components. What we're going to do is add a static mesh which is going to be our character. So I add a static mesh and we'll specify what that static mesh is, which is the character. There it is. Now it's sitting underneath that fire and I can go compile and save. Didn't have to do any blueprint stuff. It's really just kind of creating a blueprint to, to hold all this in, in one grouping. And now we can get rid of this placeholder geometry and I can just drag and drop this BP burning geometry node which contains the model and the effects on top of it now. So they're both lined up and I can move them together, um, rotate them, whoops, rotate them together and it all just works. So now the question is, uh, now that we have this all connected, what happens if we start moving it? So if I have the character here and I'm looking at it and maybe I go in to the, to the top bar here and I go into simulation mode, and I play, and I select the geometry, and I move it around. Well, we have a problem. The effects of the fire does not move or get affected by that velocity change or by the movement of the character. So what I need to do is get something kind of to give us velocity into our fluids or into our particles from the movement of this geometry. So to do that, what I'm going to end up doing is going back into the effects, so the effect system burning geometry, and I'm going to add another node under particle spawn here. And the node I'm going to add is a velocity. So we can add velocity or we can just type velocity. You can add velocity, but we don't want to do that. We want to inherit velocity or you know, we can inherit velocity from another source. But in this case, actually we want to do static mesh velocity. So if we hover over that, it says add velocity based on the normals from a static mesh. So I'm going to add that. And it will have add velocity along mesh normals. So that'll just put a little bit more velocity into the, the fire, but that's still not gonna make it properly interact. If I save that and do the same thing, still don't have any movement. So that's just emitting velocities from the normals of the mesh. So the normals of the mesh will emit velocities in their direction. And that's usually something good to have. But the thing that's really going to allow us to have velocities from the object movement is going to be under particle spawn here. I'll add one other node. And this time I'm going to type velocity. But I'm not going to add static mesh velocity. I'm going to inherit velocity. So we want both of those. And now this will inherit velocity from another source, defaults to the position of the particle emitter, which owns the emitter, as you can see in that description there. And what this will do is allow us to get velocity from that mesh, and then you'll have an inherited velocity speed limit. And you probably want to keep this at like 100 or 80 or so. And then you have a source speed threshold, which is like if your object is moving a tiny bit, you can have it so it doesn't affect the fluid or the velocity of the particles. Um, that way it doesn't flicker or do weird things. So you can usually turn that on. 25 is okay, maybe 15, a little bit better. And for speed limit, 100 is okay. Maybe I can do 90 or 80. It depends on uh, what, you're, what looks best or what you're doing with your geometry. So I'll leave it at 100, I'll save this. So we have all these new nodes, sample the mesh, and then we specify the mesh, static mesh velocity, static mesh location, 
and hair velocity. And technically, I should put that location below that velocity, and something like that should work pretty good. And if we save this, we will go in here and do the same thing. We'll play, simulate, and if I move it, oh, moving in the wrong direction. Let me do that again. Simulate. If I move it left and right, we see smoke and fire move. But the problem is when I move left, fire goes left. Technically, the fire should go right because wind forces are, are pushing against the character and the fire should go behind. It should be left behind. So to have that behave a little bit more correct, I'll open up this effect system again and on inherent velocity, instead of velocity speed limit at 100, I'll make it negative 100. And what that will do now is when I stimulate and I move this character, the fire moves the right direction. When I move from left to right, the fire will be pushed back to the left. So now if I were to do something uh, a bit more kind of organic of a movement, like move it in a circle or something, we see how the fire emits from the movement of this character. Now, it's not perfect uh, simulation of what the fire should do when the object's moving, but it's fast and efficient and easy to set up, and it gives us uh, the illusion of it. And it's not perfect. There's other things you can do to improve this, but that's kind of how we can start to get velocities from our object movement and have dynamic objects that are moving to actually cast Niagara fluids and have some sort of reaction uh, in that Niagara fluid to the movement that they're making.